blind, but now I see. For John Newton had had the same experience. He had gone to the far country, away from God. And he had tried his best to run from God. One time he went to one of the most obscure islands in Africa where he thought no one would ever find him. And it's, it's not possible to run from God. He is the hound of heaven. <laughs> you say, well, Dr. Jeremiah, how does that affect me? Well, let me tell you. If you don't know Jesus and you're here today, it's because God is pursuing you. Why do you think you're here? Oh, somebody invited me. Well, why did you come? <laughs> you came because somehow in the whole fabric of your life, if you don't know the grace and love and forgiveness of the Savior who has been lifted up on this platform today, it is not God's fault. He's coming after you. He loves you. He is the one who came to this earth for you. He is the one who left heaven and all of its glory and its beauty to become one of us and in the incarnation to be walking among us and then ultimately to go to the cross and pay the penalty for your sin and for mine. And he will keep pursuing you until you say the final no. He can save an atheist. He can save a person who is bitter against God because of all the tragedies in his family. He is the pursuer. As you know, I live in California. I get a lot of interesting questions about California. And one of the things that people ask me often, uh, they say to me, Dr. Jeremiah, is your church a seeker-friendly church or is it seeker-driven? Now, I'm not really sure what to answer when they ask that question. But one day I was reading in the scripture, and I began to read, and it said that no man seeks after God. And then I read later on that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. So I finally realized we've got the thing reversed. God is the seeker. So if God is the seeker, I'm seeker-friendly. <laughs> I'm seeker driven. <laughs> I, I, I want to do whatever he wants me to do. <laughs> and I want to say to you today that for you to be in a community that cares enough about you and the community to host an event like this, for you to be seated in this place among friends and loved ones, and for you to have in your thought even one, one little nuance about God, is the beginning of God coming after your heart. And when he comes and knocks at the door of your heart, you have to let him in. The door of your heart has no outside way, uh, no inside way. There's, there's only one way that you can let Jesus Christ into your heart, and that you have to open the door from the inside. He's not going to force himself into your life. But he will pursue you and he will ask you and he will come after you. No matter what you've done or where you've been, there is no one in this room who is outside of the reach of the hand of a loving God. And he brought you here today because of his profound love for you and because of his amazing grace. Would you do me the favor, with my apologies to the, the songster here this morning, of letting me hear this whole congregation sing Amazing Grace. W would you lead that for me? Thank you.
to the hermit like a slave set free. Please thank God with a praise offering for this marvelous message from Dr. Jeremiah today. I learned a long time ago, no time spent with God is ever wasted. And so this has been a glorious time. I want you to do one more thing for us as we close uh, in our gratitude to God for this moment. I want you to join me and stand as we thank God for this great nation that he has blessed us with.
Praise the Lord. We're going to ask for our benediction at this time. I'll invite you to pray with me as uh, we pray together. I would like uh, for the petitions of the Lord's Prayer to form our praying. And then I'll invite you to pray with me.